Adultsa Sista, Celestialot Sista. My ancestral names are Adultsa and Celestialot. My English name is Anna, and I'd like to acknowledge that we are currently on the Swinomish tribal lands, and we will be harvesting our friend Stiquad, salmon berry. It's really important when you are harvesting to acknowledge and to say the ancestral names of these berries because they haven't heard their name in a really long time. When identifying salmon berry, you'll notice that they grow in dense thickets like the one behind me. And when looking at the leaves, there are three per stem and the leaves range in size. This is kind of like a medium sized leaf that you'll find on one of the bushes. And if you bend down this middle one, you'll notice that the bottom two will make that which resembles a butterfly, which is really cool. The leaves edges are toothed and deeply veined and on the back for the stems you have to beware because there are small thorns that do grow along these. Salmonberry is cousin to rose and has five petals which is the same as wild rose and they have a really similar pink color but salmonberry is a little bit deeper and a little bit more pink. Salmon berries are really high in vitamin C as well as other minerals. The sprouts are also referred to as bear's candy. If you peel back the stem, you can chew on them and these are great for your gum, for your gut inflammation, as well as wounds. And the leaves can be dried and they pair very well with their cousins, which include thimbleberry, blackberry, and rose. Many Coast Salish families maintain their salmon berry patches like they do a berry patch. My late grandmother actually also did this in our own backyard and we have a small salmon berry shrub which we maintain. And each season we're able to enjoy these berries. They're best enjoyed fresh as they're really juicy and they don't dry very well. The season's very short for salmon berries so when they come, Coast Salish families also often hold celebrations and ceremonies to honor the berry and to honor the salmon. My name is Joseph Williams. My Indian name is Squikwai. I'm here to share a story with you today about the salmonberry bird and raven. One day, salmonberry bird invited raven to her house for a meal. And when raven showed up at her house, she asked her children to go out and pick berries. And while they were picking, she sang her song. And while she was singing, their baskets began to fill up with berries. When the children returned, everybody feasted on an abundance of salmon berries of all of the different colors. After dinner, Raven asked, will you come to my house for dinner tomorrow? And when Salmonberry Bird arrived at Raven's house, he asked his children to go pick berries. And while they were picking, he sang his song in his croaky voice. And the children waited and waited their baskets never filled up with berries. And eventually, Salmonberry Bird returned home with no berries. What do you think the moral of the story is? Raven is unsuccessful in mimicking Salmonberry Bird's gift that is their song. And one teaching we can take away from that is how instead of copying and mimicking each other, it's important for us to instead hone in on our own talents and be the best versions of ourselves instead of trying to be someone else. Sam and Barry is part of an interconnected web of relationships and it's pink flowers at the first splash of colors which then lead to the hummingbird coming home to drink the sweet nectar. And with the hummingbird then comes the Swanson's thrush and her song sings the berries into ripeness and helps call the salmon back to their ancestral waters.